Hey, what's up everybody? Jake here and welcome to The Hobby. Today we are talking about the biggest mistakes that I see Pokemon card collectors making all the time. These are mistakes that I have made. These are mistakes that I've seen other collectors made. So hopefully by sharing this list with you guys, you can also avoid some of these major pitfalls in your collecting journey. Before we get started, I would like to thank BuyE for sponsoring today's video. If you haven't heard, BuyE is the go-to source for picking up exclusive Pokemon cards that are only available in Japan. I've used BuyE for years to pick up all kinds of cool cards like Mario Pikachu, Scream Mimikyu, and Japan Post promo cards. BuyE gives you a direct line to Japan's hottest collectibles and they will ship it to you anywhere in the world. They've just launched their new TCG-centric storefront, making it more collector-friendly than ever before. Using their service is incredibly easy. I just use their service to pick up the new Unigaba promo cards from the Pokemon Center Japan for free with my purchase through BuyE. Click the link in the description to sign up to BuyE today. BuyE offers full buyer insurance and delivery inspection as well, so you can have peace of mind that you are getting what you paid for. New signups get a 10% coupon off your very first purchase. Thank you again to Buy E for sponsoring today's video. Now you're going to see that a lot of these mistakes kind of roll into one another. So we're going to start off with the first big one, and that is over investing or looking at every new set as a brand new investment vehicle. And I see this all the time when a brand new set comes out, I get a ton of DMs and messages asking, Hey Jake, Paldean Fates is coming out in two months. Should I pick up 10 Elite Trainer boxes of this new set and keep them long term? And my answer is always no. No. Stop picking up a bunch of sealed products of the brand new latest Pokemon card set to keep long term. Enjoy brand new sets for what they are, which is a set for you to crack open and enjoy. In most cases, brand new sets are not something for you to just collect and hoard long term. Look at older sets like Lost Origin or Shining Fates, those Elite Trainer boxes are now so gosh darn cheap and I know there are collectors out there holding 10, 20, 30 Elite Trainer boxes of these products when they should have been just what they were, which was a brand new set for you to enjoy. Don't think of every new set as a cash cow or some brilliant investment vehicle that's going to make you tens of thousands of dollars long term. Think of new sets as what they are which is a fun new set for you to enjoy and crack open, and that's the way they should be looked at. The second big mistake that I see a lot of collectors make is over collecting. And now that seems like kind of an odd problem to have. How can you collect too many Pokemon cards? But that's actually a thing that happens a lot. There's tons of people out there that keep asking me, what do they do with their thousands and thousands of bulk Pokemon cards? They have large cardboard boxes, full of Pokemon cards, or you see closets full of VMAX, premium collections, and elite trainer boxes, and all kinds of sealed products. And what I'm going to say is, don't over collect. Do you really need five copies of every single new product that release? Probably not. So really narrow down what are you truly collecting. Not every new product needs to be collected. Do you actually like this product? Do you need a copy of every new blister and tin and elite trainer box? Pokemon card collecting can get extremely expensive very, very quickly. And a lot of this stuff just ends up sitting collecting dust in your closet and they don't really appreciate that much in value over the next couple of years because like I said, they're brand new products. What ends up happening is your collection becomes a burden on you, whether you get sick, whether you need money, whether you're looking to move or relocate, that large collection has to be moved with you, or perhaps you have it all inside of a storage unit, which is costing you hundreds of dollars every single month. So it can get very expensive to just collect and hold a ton of Pokemon cards. So don't over collect. Have a nice collection, but really enjoy what you have rather than trying to collect everything. The next big mistake that I see a lot of collectors making, and as you're gonna see, these definitely roll into one another, is being disorganized. Once you collect a ton of Pokemon cards, you're gonna start seeing they kind of get everywhere. You're gonna get Pokemon cards on your table, you're gonna start losing cards, especially you have random elite trainer boxes full of ultra rares and VMAX cards lying all over the place. And in five years time frame, you're gonna start seeing scenarios where you go, oh yeah, that card that was worth $2 that I had in my collection is now worth $100, but I have no idea where it is. 
So being organized with your collection is super duper important. In fact, that's one of the first thing I would consider thinking about. Are you gonna have nicely categorized binders or are you going to digitize it where you use an app, something like the collector app, which is very popular right now for keeping track of what's inside of your collection. So use whatever platform you want or however you wanna do it, but make sure that your collection is organized. You don't need to know where all of your Pokemon cards are at all times, but you should have a good idea of where your cards are. And if you need to get to them, if you need to get to a specific card, you should be able to locate it within a matter of minutes. And if you can't do that, that probably means you're not organized enough. And what ends up happening is you lose money or you lose your collection long terms. Cards get lost, cards get damaged because you're not properly storing them or organizing them. So being disorganized ends up costing you a lot of money in the long term. So the best way to really go about it is to simply start now. However big your collection is, small or large, start organizing it now. Have a good understanding of how you want your collection to grow long term and it's gonna help you out so much in the long run. The next big mistake that I see a lot of collectors making is never selling or trading your collection. And I know that there is a little bit of taboo when it comes to selling Pokemon cards or trading it, but this is a major part of the hobby. Collecting is not the same as hoarding. There's probably cards inside of your collection that you don't really enjoy right now or you don't really care about. And there's probably cards that's not in your collection that you really, really want. So to enhance your collection, some of the best things you can do is to sell and trade off pieces that you don't want and to get pieces that you do want. Selling and trading kind of has a little bit of taboo to it because a lot of collectors feel like that's losing a part of their collection, but really it's a tool to help you enhance your collection long-term. You shouldn't feel bad about selling your collection. In most cases, it's going to someone that's going to appreciate the card more than you, especially if it's a card that you're not really displaying or appreciating inside of your collection. So do what you have to, but make sure that you're utilizing selling and trading as a part of the hobby. It's just a part of the ecosystem. Do not hoard your Pokemon cards. You're just gonna end up hurting your collection long-term. When you sell and trade your Pokemon cards, you end up making new interpersonal connections with other collectors that I think is actually one of the biggest tool when it comes to collecting Pokemon cards because when it comes to this hobby, it's really about all the connections and communications that you have because other collectors can help you build up your collection and at the same time, you can help them build up their collection. Collecting Pokemon cards is really about the community and connecting with other collectors. And it's never been easier with social media right now to sell, trade, and interact with other collectors. I'm interacting with other collectors from around the world every day. And it's so cool because there are so many collectors out there that have cards from my personal collection now in their collection. And of course I have a bunch of cards from other collectors collection in my collection. So that's a huge part of Pokemon card collecting. And I think you're missing out on it if you never sell or trade any of your cards away. The last big mistake that I see a lot of collectors making is simply not having a goal. What they're doing is they're collecting almost for the sake of collecting. So they're collecting just random cards. They see some cards that they like at a show or they see some cool cards online and they start picking them up. They throw them in a binder and they forget about them long term. So a lot of the other mistakes from earlier on this video are just compiling upon them. And what ends up happening is you get to a scenario where you're collecting cards and you don't even know why you're collecting them. Why do you have five copies of that card? Why'd you pick up uh, that ETB or why'd you pick up that sealed product when you're just not even gonna display it? You don't even like what it looks like. Sometimes people say, I don't know, it's just the latest set. It's just a product that I thought was cheap. Uh, I just thought this card was cool at the time, but now I realize I don't really need it. So really focus in on what you truly want to collect because unfortunately the hobby is too large for most people to collect everything. You have a limited budget, I have a limited budget, you cannot collect everything when it comes to Pokemon cards. You're not gonna collect every single Pokemon card. So at the end of the day, collect what you truly enjoy. There's limited spaces on your walls, there's limited spaces on your shelves. You're not gonna be able to look at everything at all time. So focus in on what you truly want to collect. And that can mean all kinds of different things. I can use myself for an example. What do I enjoy? I enjoy alt art cards, I enjoy Pikachu promos, I enjoy full art trainer cards, I enjoy really cool looking sealed products. So those are the kinds of things that I enjoy and I'm a huge display collector. I love showing off my collection. I love 
talking about my collection. I love showing it off and gushing about it. When friends come over or I have other collectors come over and I show them my collection, I can pick up a card and talk about it for hours. And that's the kind of collector I am. And that doesn't mean you have to be that kind of collector. Just know what kind of collector you are. It could be something as simple as collecting water type Pokemon, collecting a Pokemon that you're really into like Scyther or Snorlax or collecting a specific color any card that has a blue sky, for example, lots of different collectors will go about different approaches, but having a goal will really help you appreciate your collection more when every card comes in, enhances your collection, and you're smiling and excited about every single new card that you get. At the end of the day, you don't wanna be a zombie collector, someone that's just aimlessly collecting random stuff, swiping their credit card, and at the end of the day, they don't even enjoy what they're doing, and that's how you end up being burned out by the hobby, and no one wants that. So that, I think, is the biggest mistake that people make, not having a goal, and end up being burned out and tired from collecting Pokemon cards at the end of the day. I am still excited to collect every new card that I have, and I've been doing this for so long. And a big part of how I keep my excitement up is that I know what I enjoy, I know what I like, and every single new card that I'm purchasing or collecting, I am excited to have in my collection. And that's gonna help you out so much in the long term. All right, everybody, that's the end of today's video. Thank you so much for watching. These are some of the biggest mistakes that I see Pokemon card collectors making all the time. If you have any other major mistakes that you have had in your repertoire, let me know down in the comment section if you have any questions. I'd be happy to answer them or listen to your story. Whatever you want to put down in the comment section, I pretty much read it all. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.